Okay, let's begin. So uh, the uh, Gemara yesterday that we learned, we're talking about sukkah, that you're uh, putting a uh, some type of a platform in the sukkah in order to minimize the height of the sukkah, because the problem is that the uh, schach is too high. And uh, if you put a uh, itztaba, which is a platform in the sukkah, uh, and uh, the platform will minimize some of that height because you'll, you'll measure from the top of the platform until the uh, schach. And uh, this platform, you know, it's interesting, it comes right after the previous Gemara that talked about being mevato, uh, straw, nullifying the straw of the earth. So here uh, the Gemara talks about a um, a platform in Itztaba and um, and the itztaba is uh, basically needs to be obviously uh, you know nullified or uh, it needs to be uh, considered part of the sukkah, right? It's a continuation of um, of the uh, previous uh, gemara. So Rashi tells us that um, the itztaba is a binyan avonim v'tit. It's a it's a an itztaba. This platform is. Uh, is uh, stones or rocks and uh, and uh, cement, which means that it's sort of uh, uh, you know it's 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 ground it's 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 stuck in there, and um, seemingly that's why Rashi mentions that. Why does he mention that it's uh, an itztaba a binyan of avanim betit? I mean, maybe that's the simple translation of it, but it seems that he's more telling us a halacha that he's trying to get around the problem of the. Uh, previous Gemara, where we had all this discussion of what's considered nullified and considered ground, because if you just put stuff there, it doesn't necessarily become the floor of your sukkah. It becomes a, maybe a temporary item that's placed there, but is it really considered the floor of the sukkah? So uh, Rashi mentions Avanabatit, which I'm, I'm understanding to mean Rashi's uh, trying to uh, explain why it's considered to be the ground just because you put some type of a uh, uh, a uh, uh, a platform does that make it does that make it the ground now um uh which which, which is something that you know you you think of they, they they have many uh halls where they have these break up platforms or do they sort of like uh uh where they uh thank you ezra tit is mud or clay but they use it like as a form of cement where they uh, it's used as a uh, sort of like, no, it's not true, Ezra. They don't use it as some type of a, uh, you know, the mud and the clay is meant to harden and, and uh, sort of like be part of the building, right? That That's how they, that was their type of cement in those days. Am I, am yeah, I yeah. Yeah. We, that makes sense? We, we right. use, in the, in the Southwest, they use that to create, you know, uh, uh, bricks and things of that nature, yeah. So, um, uh, so, so anyway, uh, uh, you know, this the question would be: What would be well, like a platform that you, you know, these uh, um, dance floors that they put put, you know, they put some type of dance floors. Or I've I've rented halls to make a music event, and they they put on these uh, this stage that's a, uh, a temporary little stage. You know, that would be uh, questionable here. Would that work for a sukkah? You know, would that minimize the height? If you have a very tall sukkah and you put one of those, is that considered batal or not batal? Is that nullified or not? Anyway, so the, the case of the Yitztaba, Rashi tells us is avanim, the tit, and uh, basically it's, uh, uh, it's I guess, part of the uh, part of the floor. Uh, and uh, anyway, so the, uh, the, the case uh, that the Gemara mentioned was that it's... Um, um uh it's over 20 amas. You put this so the first case was that you put it in the middle, in other words, by the middle wall, and it doesn't necessarily extend all the way to the front to the entrance of the sukkah, but it is on the uh the in inner half of the sukkah or inner part of the sukkah, and it it it, it basically uh attaches to three walls. It's a it's a slab, a slab attaching to the uh, the right wall, the middle wall, and the left wall. And so it goes along the, the back wall of the sukkah. 
And now your sukkah is no longer too high. It is uh, uh, less than 20 amas because you're calculating from the top of this platform to the uh, to the roof. And uh, the Gemara said that um, as long as the sukkah has, as long as the platform has a hechsher sukkah, meaning it's big enough to be considered a sukkah in its own right, so then that's a kosher sukkah. And Rashi adds that we actually, um, you are allowed then to sit in the entire sukkah, even further on, it's considered a continuation of that sukkah, and um, and it would be um, it would be uh, uh, kosher to sit in, even though the roof, the ceiling is more than twenty amas. Now, um, because otherwise, what's the what's so, so? Of course, you could sit on the, in, on top of the platform. Is no question. The Gemara is telling. platform on the side wall so it touches the back wall and the side wall but it doesn't touch the other side wall so in that scenario we need to rely on a special law that's called doifen akuma it's a special law that we are we are able to turn a um somehow connect a wall to the schach or to the platform and move the wall we're somehow connecting the wall to make it a third wall for your sukkah. What do you mean? How can I attach the third wall to the sukkah if it's not attached? How, how are we doing this? It's a halachic uh, um, a special rule, meaning it's a, it's one of those laws that it, we we consider it as if. And so the the uh, wall is far away. It's uh, less than four amas, less than six feet maybe, but it's but it's uh, uh, but but it's still far away. And the halacha allows us to connect it to the um, uh, to the platform and to the schach that's above the platform, and uh, but we consider it as if the the um, the doif and the wall is bent. That's the literal meaning, doif and akuma, the crooked wall, and we uh, we basically consider this wall part of this sukkah. So. I mentioned yesterday that the seemingly you would not be allowed to sit under this area because under this area uh, where the, is is called a bent wall, you're you're sitting under a wall. The schach is above twenty amis high, and uh, that's a problem. And the uh, we uh, want to call it a bent wall. That bent wall would be. A uh, um, a problem to sit under. Uh, now uh, the other case, the earlier case, was not considered a bent wall. We were just calling it a schach that continues outside of the kosher sukkah area, and that we're going to call psal hayotzi min sukkah, a special law that we're going to learn about later. That maybe the sukkah can be extended, even if it doesn't have all the rules of sukkah. That we we look at the schach and we we extend the schach we extend the sukkah because of the because the schach is extended, so that Rashi tells us would work, but here uh, it's on the side. Here you wouldn't be able to uh, dwell under the um, under the sukkah. Now, uh, and I mentioned that there were two ways of learning this special law. The simple understanding of it is that it's the wall is bent, and uh the um uh, the the rule of connect of making this a kosher sukkah because it's less than dalar amis that's the maximum size you, know, you can't you can't go beyond you can't do four amis it's too too far to allow that this law doesn't allow this law only allows up to four amis four cubits and if as long as it's within four cubits we have a special law called the halacha lemaisha misina a special law given to Moses at Sinai that uh, we can attach we can use such a such a wall and call it a bent wall and i mentioned that we this is very common when people have overhangs in their um, people have overhangs in their uh, uh, by their sukkah so what they're really doing is considering that overhang to be a bent wall 
and it leads right on. And they're counting that wall as one of the walls of their sukkah, even though the wall is far away from their sukkah. It's five feet away. Nevertheless, it's considered a, a uh, wall of their sukkah because we're considering it a bent wall. So what is the bent wall? The the wall is like a 90 degree angle. It's a uh, it's a uh, 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 part of the roof, the, the, the hangover, and the wall itself of the house. And that is your wall. It's all part of your wall. Uh, what do you mean? It's a roof. Yeah, but the halacha allows it to be considered a wall, and the wall goes right up to the other wall, to the schach, and it, it basically wraps around your sukkah, and you now have a three-wall sukkah instead of a two um, parallel wall sukkah, you have three walls. Instead of just having the two uh, um, parallel walls, you have that third wall because we're calling it a, a bent wall. Anyway, so here also, this is where you have the platform in the middle, which is meant to minimize the uh, the size of the schach, the height of the schach, that here also we can use the same law and uh, connect the side wall to the other walls and, and make it a kosher make it a kosher sukkah. I mentioned that there's another way of understanding this, and that is that we that we consider the wall to be moved over, and we move over the one. It's not that the wall and the schach is is all part of a wall. It's that the wall is considered to be moved over and close to the platform and to the schach above the platform, and that makes this sukkah a kosher sukkah. And according to that. If you look at it that way, which is not the simple way of, of learning it, but if you do learn it that way, there comes out to be certain halachic differences. Uh, like uh, you, you might have a difference in, in, in halacha. Um, if we move over the wall, we consider the wall close. So there's room to say that you might be allowed to sit even outside that wall because special the special law of psal hayotzim and asukah there might be room to say that you could sit under it if you call that a wall it's a problem if you call that a wall uh you get it under the wall but for some reason if it's if it's not considered a uh, a wall it's it's schach you're sitting under schach and we are moving the wall over, considering it as if the wall is here and it's a kosher sukkah, and then the extra schach is sort of like a continuation of the schach. There might be room to say that you could sit under it. Again, according to Rashi, we said that that, that won't work, but um, but uh, there there is room to say uh, that, that, it, that it could work if you learn it the other way. There's also an interesting case. What happens if you stole schach? If you stole schach and you put it on your sukkah, and it's on the side of your sukkah. So if that's, if you stole, so in other words, if some of the branches, and I guess it's not so uncommon because uh, uh, when you can't get schach, you go and, and cut it down from the, uh, you know, the city you was in watching and you take some of their schach. It could be problematic of stealing schach. But anyway, um, uh, the uh, the thing is that, uh, so you take the schach and you put it on your, on your, the side of your sukkah. So you have the main part of your sukkah, you have kosher stock. On the side of your sukkah, you have non-kosher stock. So here, what are you going to do? You want to use the law of daif and akuba. You can't, you can't use a non-kosher schach for your sukkah. You can't use the non-kosher, you can't use stolen schach for your sukkah. You also can't use stolen walls for your sukkah. So if we consider this all part of the bent wall, so whether it's schach, stolen schach, or whether it's stolen wall, it's all going to be a problem of sitting under it for your sukkah because it's it's stolen or you can't you you can't use such a sukkah. But if we look at it as if the wall is moved over, it means we don't need this schach on top. The schach on the side is stolen. I don't need any of that because I'm considering the wall to be moved over. If I'm considering the wall to be moved over, so this I'm, so this sukkah is not connected in any way. The wall or the schach is not part of the stolen material stolen goods and therefore it would be a kosher sukkah however if we look at the wall as if it's a bent wall so that means part of my bent wall is is stolen goods i can't use a sukkah that has a stolen wall just as, as, as and therefore i would be a non-kosher sukkah so again it depends on how you understand the law 
of Daif and Akuma would, would have some ramifications. There are what's called a nafkamina. There are differences in halacha. There is one more difference that's brought down, and that is, would you be allowed to have half walls? We spoke a, about having a sukkah here in Florida, especially people only build their sukkah with the bottom wall, bottom half of the wall. They leave the top empty. Now, that's called a sukkah that's not magia l'schach. We, we, we mentioned it earlier that if you have a sukkah, the, 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 the wall doesn't reach the schach. There are special laws that allow it to be considered to reach the schach. Can you say that law when it comes to doifen akuba? In other words, we want to consider the wall to be a bent wall. What happens if your schach, if your wall doesn't reach the schach? Can you still say the law of doifen akuba? If you want to say it's a, all a bent wall, you can't really say that because there's no wall there. It didn't reach the schach, so logically it's it, 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 it wouldn't work to say you want to call this all a bent wall. But they're, 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 it's missing wall. You can't really attach the two walls. However, if we just say we're moving over the wall closer, then you could maybe say that even though it doesn't reach the schach, we could say the rule works because we're just moving over your wall to closer to the platform. So again, it would be applicable maybe in this scenario where you have a platform and you want to move over the wall or bend the wall to make it kosher, to make this sukkah kosher with the platform. And the thing is that the wall doesn't really reach the schach, but nevertheless, because... Uh, if you learn it in a way that you're just moving the wall over, so now you have a half a wall closer to the schach, and it reaches, and it, it basically can can say this rule. However, if you learn it the other way, that you have to, that we're going to make this wall into like a bent wall, seemingly you can't have any empty space. It would need to be, uh, it would need to be full in order to make this uh, a kosher sukkah called a called a bent wall. You would need it to be going all the way up to the up to the schach. So that, that's the understanding, at least of the commentaries, that this these would be the three differences between these two ways of learning it. And we, we learned Rashi yesterday. Uh, we sort of uh, tried to uh, see in Rashi how he's understanding the mechanics of this of this rule of Daifen oh, Kuma. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, David. So there's a difference between a person is a person who can't steal a sukkah, but he can steal schach. Is that what no, you're no, saying? no. Neither, neither. You can't. Well, first of all, no one's allowed to steal. The question is, if you, if someone did, would the sukkah be kosher? And on that, we said no. You cannot not have uh, non-kosher schach, uh, stolen schach. You can't have stolen walls. However, if there's a way of getting around the wall or getting around the schach that we're not using that. Then it would be a kosher sukkah, even though, of course, you're not allowed to steal. But if someone did and had that as part of their schach, there, there might be a way around it. In that way around it is dependent on how you learn the law of daif and akuma. Because if you learn the law of daif and akuma, that we move your wall from where it is to closer to the kosher schach. So if you follow that logic, what ends up happening is we are disregarding the schach that's in the other area. It's not part of your sukkah. It's not a wall and it's not schach because we just moved your wall over and your wall now excludes that area. That, that's not part of the sukkah, that schach. So you have a kosher sukkah with no, no stolen goods. That would make it a code that would be fine. However, if we look at the law of Daif and Akum in a way that it's a bent wall, that your wall is on the, on the ceiling, it's it's part of your wall, or the schach, which is above 20 amis, whatever, it's part of your wall, it goes down, and that, that whole area is part of your wall. We're now making your wall a very long wall because it's uh, going up and it's going, it's going across. If all of that is part of your wall, all of that wall needs to be non-stolen goods. And then if it was if any part of that is stolen, it would hassle your sukkah. So these based on these two ways of learning Daif and Akuma, you could have such a difference if part of it is is stolen. And I, I mentioned that there are scenarios where it happens because people do uh 
uh, somehow uh, sometimes need uh, schach and they sort of uh, get schach without permission and, and who knows what. Yes, uh, Mordechai. Yeah, well, we used to have this children's book, I think it was called The Wind and the Saka, where uh, the premise was uh, there was this uh, big wind uh, that cut, uh, carried surplus Saka materials to somebody else's yard so that they could observe the mitzvah <laughs> Saka. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right. Well, there. Listen, if a hurricane comes, you know, I guess what 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 ends up in your, I guess people give up hope. That that's one of the rules of of ownership is if someone, if the person gives up hope, you know, they don't expect it back. Uh, that's uh, you know, that that's uh, that's another thing. The main thing is that they know about it. So when a hurricane happens, at least they know the hurricane happens. When you go and cut off someone else's uh, uh, branch, they don't really know about it. So it's called a yir shalemidas. Called the giving up, you know, not, it's they're they're uh, uh, not expecting it. They, they don't know about it to give to give up hope. They they're not aware of it, so that's where it could become uh, a little problematic. There is a way around it. If someone stole schach and then gives it to someone else, so it's a so it's a, somehow it it changes ownership. So uh, um, so so it's a different owner. There, there is the discussion about it how to how to get around it. Anyway, yeah, a um, number of years ago, we went on a uh, circus tour in uh, Orlando, and I think like on on Hoshana Rabba, there was a hurricane. Yeah, there was. Yeah, that was a crazy. I remember that year. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was many years ago. Yeah, it was about fifteen years ago. More maybe, but, but they actually told everyone to take down the sukkah. Yeah, the, oh boy, it was cool. We had to like rebuild our sukkah then. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue here. So the Gemara here, uh, the Gemara here asked the question of, um, yeah, let let's do it inside Tanina. We're on page four a, and uh, we're gonna start about uh, 15 lines up from the bottom of the page. The word is Tanina, or, my, or actually my Komash Malon. It's the line before that. Let's start with my Komash Malon, the first word on the line, my Komash Malon. Um, yeah, so it's about 15, 16 lines up from the bottom, and it's uh, 4A. And the Gemara had just mentioned this law about Itztaba, <clears throat> that you have a, a platform on the side of the sukkah. And we just said that as long as it's not Dalit Amais, as long as it's uh, within four Amais, it is kosher. So the Gemara asks, my Komash Malan, what are you letting us hear? The Amrinan Daif and Akuma, that you say this law of Daif and Akuma, Tanina, we learned it in a Mishnah. It is a Mishnah that you can do Daif and Akuma, you can bend a wall. Bayesh Nifras, if you have a house that it basically caved in, it got a hole. So uh, and you put a schach on top, if from the from the wall to the schach is four amis or more, sula it is puzzle, it is invalid. If it's less than that, if you have less than four cubits to the wall, so you know you got this big hole in the middle of your dining, in the middle of your living room, and uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the hole takes up basically almost all of your uh, ceiling and you have less than four amas to the, each of the walls. So um, uh, uh, if you have less than that, Shera, it is a kosher sukkah. You put schach on that hole, that area that uh, has uh, the hole and you go and put one of those uh, bamboo mats, uh, kosher bamboo mats for schach. And uh, now it's a kosher, it's Shera, it is kosher. I should mention. I'm just thinking now. Uh, what's uh, interesting is there's a whole uh, discussion in the uh, Shulchan Aruch and uh, um, among the authorities about putting schach. Uh, what's holding up your schach? Does your schach need to be held up by uh, kosher beams? Like, do the beams need to be kosher that are holding up your schach? So, for example, can you use metal? Um, uh, poles 
uh, on your sukkah. And that's what's going to hold up your mat. Let's say you have a sukkah mat. Can you use metal? You have these, you know, narrow metal uh, poles that you're going to put on the, uh, from side to side on your sukkah. So it's a machloikas, and we try to be machmir, something that's makabel tuma, something that is a vessel, it receives tuma, you're not really allowed to use for uh, for schach. If you can't use it for schach, you also should not use it as something that holds up your schach. And uh, this Gemara right here seems to say that your house seemingly, well, the, I guess the question is what's, what your what what's uh uh is 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 the wood beams that are uh that are on your that are um across your house that are across the ceiling uh you're you're basically leaning seemingly you're leaning your schach on whatever's left of your roof right that was that's what the assumption is over here that's that that would be the simple understanding of this case so if that's so would that create a problem of uh, having your schach held up with something that's makabel tuma, but I guess not. I guess it's not really makabel tuma because, first of all, it's attached to the ground, and uh, second of all, I guess it's attached to the ground. It's not makabel tuma, and um, and second of all, wood is not really is not makabel tuma if it's not made into a vessel. So maybe that's not a problem. I guess it's not a problem. Yeah. So anyway, so this is the uh, you know, many people are here. I should I should mention many people are careful when they buy those prefab sukkahs that are made out of metal. They try to put wood across so that the schach leans on the wood because otherwise you're relying on a lenient you're relying on a lenient view that uh, your schach is being held up by metal, and metal is makabel tumah. Metal receives uh, can can become tummy. It's an item that can become tummy. It's called you know. Th therefore, it's considered puzzle invalid for schach itself. And so we try to be more strict uh, to follow the views that say that you're not allowed to have metal even that holds up your schach, holds up your 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 uh, mat or your uh, uh, fronds uh, and other stuff. Yes, uh, Jeffrey. So I, we have to know about the society at that time. A lot of the places that had kind of plaster, maybe walls, or they had maybe stone even as part of the walls. So if, if you think about it, that the roof caved in, but they still have walls to hold uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. so uh -huh. Might be a little bit easier to imagine. Right. That. Well, the only thing I'm thinking is that the uh, there is a Mishnah later that talks about using what 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 size um um uh wood would be considered like a roof that would be puzzle right. for schach so you see from that mishnah that they used wood and they used very uh, thick wood you know very wide wood it was not a two by four for their roofs it was a two by eight or you know or something like that for the roof for the ceiling right this for the ceiling and for the roof yeah. so you see that that was there that they used wood for the from that mission you see that so it seems seemingly that's what they're that's what's good this schach is 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 hanging on um, so people would yeah, like not a pit. proof i'm not proving anything because yeah. i it doesn't say here clearly what it's hanging on we're just um i'm just assuming that that that, that would be a simple understanding of this case based on that yeah okay so a, lot anyway. of different, a lot of materials that, that could have been used so right right wouldn't okay. be the true. same true yeah we could, i'm just uh yeah just guessing uh yeah. victor did you want to say something yeah i had a, I have a little curiosity the the wood so we have a prefab sukkah and then we have wood with and it's it's metal and on the edge on the on the top and then we have wood with notches that yeah. fits over the metal and then you roll right. the stock over the wood. Over the wood. So, so that's that means good. that, but that means that the wood, you, 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 your kavana should not be that the wood is part of the stock. The right. wood is the wood. The wood it's is holding, holding up, up the stock. Yeah. Holding up the stock, but it's not right. stock. So, but, but I don't know if it matters what your kavana is. 
it matters practically what is holding up the schach. Is it right. the wood or is it the metal? So the schach is not rest is resting on the wood, and the wood is resting on the metal. On the metal, that's fine. Okay. Right. The Hebrew term is called the maimid. The maimid is what's holding up the schach. The that's the maimid. So it's a ma. So it's the uh-huh. maimid is something that's not makabel tuma. That's the uh, the term. Uh-huh. So yeah, the thing is, you got to keep your eye on that because I used to have a sukkah like that with the with the with the prefab, and uh, at some point you start questioning: is 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 my schach really hanging on the wood, or is there you know, or is it hanging on the on the metal? And uh, so there are ways of going around it. Like you might want, you might, you could, could consider, and uh, I don't remember if I did this, but you could consider maybe putting a, uh, a one by two or something uh, uh, along the walls, along the, the, <clears throat> the ceiling, along the, uh, the frame on the mm. top, along the frame and somehow um, attach it maybe with a, with a plastic tie. But then your 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 schach is for sure on wood, mm-hmm. you know, and then it's the you know you, you don't have to worry. I'm just saying because they give you three little uh, pieces of wood or something, you know, to cover your whole that that officially your schach is hanging on those three little uh, uh, pieces of wood, and to say that it's completely held up by that wood and it's not really hanging on the sides on metal, you know, uh, whatever. It, uh, I don't know if it's uh, so, uh, mm. you know, whatever. You, you, you'll have to you'll, you have to take a look, you know. And so, because each each year you sort of like reevaluate. Yes, David. <laughs> I think the problem might be also with the 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 slabs or the sticks that are holding up the schach. If they're nailed in, that's where the metal comes in. Right, you... but the metal is not holding up your schach. But it's holding up the sticks that are holding okay. up the schach. Isn't but that the, again, that's called a maimid limaimid. That's like, uh, you, you really don't have to go that far. That's very extreme to be machmer that far. You, you, you know what I mean? You don't have to be worried about what's holding up the, like, for example, my 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 my, my case, you have a prefab so that's metal. Then you have a piece of wood going along the frame. And then the schach is on top of that wood. So what's holding up the wood? Your metal. What's holding up the schach? The wood. Do you have to go, do you have to take it two steps away and say, well, but the wood is being held up by the metal, right? That's, uh, that, that, when, that, that it doesn't say uh, you have to be machmer. I know it's discussed, but it's not, it's, it's not a, uh, it's not accepted. Okay, so the, um, the Gemara continues over here. So we just said that you're, that you're that we're learning this law of Daif and Akuma, and we have a Mishnah really that says it. And so, why is the Gemara uh, sort of making uh, making it as if this is such a uh, 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 great, uh, yeah, great, uh, like a so, some some new concept? Uh, it's pretty much it's it's a Mishnah that that it says pretty clearly. Of course, Daif and Akuma. You know, you don't have to tell me in the Gemara such a law that's uh, pretty clear in the Mishnah. So the Gemara says that there's a difference. I would have thought that the Mishnah, the case in the Mishnah, is a case where it's fit to be a wall, and uh, because you have your living room and the, the caved in, so the walls are the walls, and the only problem is you, you want and you put the schach on the uh, on the hole in the ceiling, you put the schach there. So in, in that scenario, the problem is that the walls have to be attached. You have to attach the walls now to the schach because they're a little far from the, from the schach is far from the walls. So, it, but the walls are walls. They're fit to be walls. Hasam hu and there it's fit to be a wall. It's just not attached. Abel hacha, but here, the lechazi ledoifen, here it's not fit to be a wall because the wall is over 20 amos. So here it's going to be a problem. Amaloy, I would say it's not going to be kosher to make. You can't do it with akuma in such a way. Your your walls are not kosher walls. Kamash Malan comes and lets us hear that even here we do we do accept your walls to be considered kosher walls. 
uh, because we're using the law of Daifan Akuma and it's attaching itself to the to the schach, that's a kosher schach size. So the wall now touches the schach, and therefore it is considered a uh, a kosher sukkah with this law of Daifan Akuma, even though the wall is not was not really fit to be a wall, but the, the Gemara says we still can say Daifan Akuma. Okay, now comes a new case. In the new case is Paisa Gavaya Michafam. What happens if your sukkah is above 20 amas? So you have um, the. Uh, you have your sukkah that's um, uh, uh, too high. Uvana it's the Babam Tiso. So you build a, um, a, a platform in the middle. So you have a platform in the middle of the of the sukkah. So Imyesh Misfat Itzba Ludaifan Arba Amai. So the law is so here it's not touching any of the walls. The previous two cases it was touching either three walls, the first case, or the second case it was touching two walls. Now it's not touching any walls. It's right in the middle. You put the platform right in the middle. So it's um the Gemara says Imyesh Mitzvah Itzba Ludaifan Arba Amis. If you have from the edge of the platform into the wall four Amis space, then you can't say Daifan Akumal Chol Ruch Beruach to every direction is psula. It is invalid as a sukkah as a kosher sukkah because we can't say the law of Daifan Akuma the bent wall Ah Pachas May Arba Amis. But if you have less than four Amis from the wall to the um from the uh, platform to the wall. Uh, so, so you can say different kosher is kosher. Why? Because we'll say different akuma. Every single wall is basically an L shape, and it, uh, uh, it, 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 the actual sukkah is going to be in the middle of that of that area, and it is less than twenty amis. Why? Because your platform minimizes that height, and so we have walls, and we have a, we have schach, and we have walls, and it's less than twenty amis. You're all set. The Gemara says, "My kamash bulan, the amrinon doifen akuma haynu hach." You're going to tell me, oh, that you could say doifen akuma. That's like the same as the previous uh, case. That even though it's bigger than twenty amos, you could say doifen akuma, right? Uh, seemingly, it's it's not no different than the previous case. The previous case, we thought maybe you can't say doifen akuma. But why? Because it's too. The walls are not really good walls because it's too tall. The walls are are too high, and um, and uh, uh, because it's uh, too high. Uh, I would think that it uh, that, that that you can't uh, you can't use this uh, this method. So the Gemara said so 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 it's the same. So the Gemara said no, you could oh, if you can. So why do you need to tell me this new case? I know how this is the same as the previous case. The Gemara answers The Gemara says I would have thought that you could say uh, in such a case where the walls are uh, too tall. You're only saying it with one wall. Then you could say it. I will call ruach the ruach, loy. But every wall you want to say doifen akuma, that you want to tell me that you could say doifen akuma with every wall. Gemara says that I would think loy. You can't do that. And my answer is kamash malan. It comes and lets us hear that. It comes and lets us hear that 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 that, that would be a. Uh, kosher sukkah, even if all the walls you need, even if all the walls are going to be relying on this law of daifan akuma, it would actually be kosher. As you would have thought that you could only say it with one wall. Well, it says, no, even if all the walls are that way, it would still be a kosher uh, sukkah. Okay, so that's uh, that gives us uh, one more uh, insight into Daifan Akuma, you could use, you could say it by all the walls. And I think maybe what the Gemara is telling us is that there are scenarios where we, we don't use uh, the Halacha Lamesha Messinais and combine them. Uh, uh, for example, I'll give you an example. It's a big problem here in Florida. If you have a sukkah that you only build a half a wall, very common here, you leave the top half empty, you just build the bottom half. The thing is, 
very common to buy those mats. They 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 make these mats that make it easier on sukkahs. You don't have to go and buy uh, and buy uh, every year uh, buy fronds. You just have the mat. You roll it up. So it's a, now there's no there's no uh, disposal issue after pay, after uh, sukkahs. There's no paying for the the schach. You have the mat. But guess what? The mat, they t- sell you an eight by eight mat. That mat is not eight by 8.1 or 8.2 by by 8.3. That mat is maybe eight by eight. They make it exact. That sounds great, except for the fact that when you put that mat on your sukkah, on one side, you put it, pull it to the end. But then on the other side, it's a little off. It's not exactly touching. It's not exactly touching at the end. And um, and because of that, it's a, it could be problematic. Why? Because what you're doing is you have your half a wall, and there's a special law that we're going to learn now called good asset, that the wall... You only built half of it, but we consider the wall to go all the way up. Okay, so your wall is all the way up, but your schach is not right there. Your wall is not going up to the schach. The schach is a, is a hand breadth away, right? Your schach, or a half a hand breadth away. So it's not exactly going up to the schach. So what you need to do is rely on another law called Lovud. But the problem with the law of Lovud is, Lovud means that anything within three hand breaths is considered attached. The problem is, can you rely on these two laws together? Can you say, good asik, that I'm lifting my schach all the way up. In Lovud, and now I'm attaching that imaginary wall Again, this is an imaginary wall that I just lifted up from a law called good asset. Now, I, I don't have an actual wall here. It's an imaginary wall. And I want to say, love it. That imaginary wall is now attached to the schach. That's a hand breath away. Well, it's within three hand breaths. Love it. So I have good asset and love it. Can you do that? Can you attach an imaginary wall to, to so you're you're taking two different two two laws two Allah Sinai's and combining them together. So here the Gemara says you could use good you could use doif and akuma on all four walls. Uh, the Gemara thought maybe not again because you're you're attaching one doif and akuma to another doif and akuma. You know you're 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 making a sukkah out of different imaginary walls and uh, maybe one would work. But can you do it for all of them? So I'm giving a little understanding of maybe this could be a uh, a reason why the Gemara really thinks that it, it wouldn't work is because you're like attaching one imaginary wall. I could imagine hey, now you want to attach all your imaginary walls and now make a whole kosher sukkah out of uh, these four imaginary uh, walls with the schach. And this, the Gemara says, it actually works. That I don't think it works with regard to the other case that I mentioned that you if your schach is not... Uh, uh, large enough, that could be problematic. You have to stretch it a little. You might want to buy a bigger schach. One of the things that I uh, uh, did when I was using uh, a mat was I bought a bigger schach than my sukkah. This way, I didn't have to worry if it's, uh, you know, if it um, uh, stretches to one side or to another side. It also is good to hold it down a little. It's a little bigger, but... Um, uh, I, well, I guess you don't you don't normally have this issue because your your walls go all the way up when you buy the prefabs. Generally, the walls go all the way up to the top, except the, except for the fact that those walls that they use sometimes they're not relying on those walls. Sometimes they use these these belts as that's the halachic wall. Those belts. I don't know if you know this, but the prefab sukkahs they have. Uh, a special, th- there's a problem with, the, with these prefab sukkahs, these, uh, whatever you call them, these metal uh, pop pop together, snap together sukkahs. They're, they're relying on a wall that's uh, fabric. The fabric flies back and forth. It waves back and forth. The wind pushes it. So 
there are many questions if that's considered a good daifan, a good wall. So what do you do? So they came up with a with a with something called lovud in good asin. What is that? They they make a wall, a different wall besides the fabric wall. There's a belt that goes around that sukkah, a narrow belt. And that belt, they give you three of them. And each of those belts is within, you know, uh, uh, nine inches of the next. And so it's every eight inches you have the belt. And ultimately, that belt makes your sukkah called a sukkah that has a, a wall of 10 tefachim, the wall of, of uh, 30 inches, you know, 35 inches or whatever. You know, because you have those three belts, and each belt is considered uh, within three hand breaths of the next uh, next belt, and that within three hand breaths of the next belt. So you have over there, you have a a, 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 a partial wall for your sukkah. Now that partial wall for your sukkah, according to halacha, can go all the way up to the schach. So what are these uh, pre-manufactured sukkahs? Uh, um, uh, relying on for their walls. They're relying on the belts, really, because the other part of the wall is not always so sturdy. It, uh, it flaps back and forth. Now, if you use the, if, you, if you're relying on those belts, that means that your schach needs to be all the way to the end because you don't have, a, your wall doesn't go all the way up to the end. Your, your fabric does, but that's not a kosher wall. You're relying on the on the belts to go up to the to the schach. Then, if you're relying on the belts to go up to the schach, then 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 it could be problematic if your schach is is not reaching is not reaching the uh, uh, if your schach doesn't reach all the ends because uh, you, you you can't then use an imaginary wall and then attach it to the schach. So that could be problematic. There are ways around it. Uh, one of the ways around it, as I mentioned, is if you buy a bigger mat. On the top, instead of buying an eight by eight mat, try buying a ten by ten mat. If you buy a ten by ten mat, or you know, uh, you 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 uh, you sort of uh, uh, have a, a number of benefits. But that, that that's one thing. The the other option is you, there are you could put non kosher schach at the edge, and then at least it would attach. It would it, your your wall would go all the way up to the non kosher schach. And that non-kosher schach becomes nullified to the kosher schach. Uh, there's there's ways of doing it that it's that it's okay. But anyway, bottom line is that um, that uh, uh, the the, uh, the answer that these uh, you know, the the, uh, the the way uh, of these uh, prefabs so not not always is it a uh, is it as simple as <laughs> it sounds. You know, they make it sound like oh, it's the easiest thing. Um, and it's it's there's no shilas. It creates some issues. You have to sort of get around them. Okay, so now we're we're up to the next case. And the next case is Rabbi. Rabbi. Yes. Yes. Uh, I don't I don't I don't know if this is what you're describing, but we have a four walled sukkah, uh -huh. and the schach is is short on one side, uh -huh. uh, like let's say a foot. So where uh -huh. that short part is, that's where the overhang is, and nobody sits over that part. Ah, so it's a four wall sukkah. But what's your? What are your other walls made out of? They're all they're uh, well. Two of the walls are the house, uh -huh. and two of the walls are um, the lattice that goes to a the lattice. Foot. Okay, yeah. so that's good. Lattice is them. good because it's solid. Yeah, it's pretty much solid, especially the wood lattice. the The plastic lattice, if you tie it strong, it's also solid. Yeah, but I'm always talking about the schach being short. So it's about, yeah, a no. foot, it's about a foot short. So where right. it's so short is where the overhang is. That's where the hangover is, right? So that that's uh, that's not an issue because that you have a four walled sukkah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, you know what I mean. So you you, you don't have to worry about that. That's uh, you you only need the other three walls. So you put your yeah. But the problem is when the when the strach is short on two sides. Right, so uh, even though you don't need four walls for your sukkah, but the problem is if they if they're cheap on your schach on this side and on the other side, you know, then you're, uh, you know, then you sort of uh, um, have to figure out a a way to to cover it. Okay. Yeah.
Rabbi Bitello has his hand up. Okay, well, Bitello. Bitello, question? No, okay. No, he doesn't. Sorry. Okay. Um, I mean, there are there are laws about a, a um, about an empty space on the sukkah. But that's another point, David. I should mention that my example was where where your schach doesn't reach the the, the, the ceiling. If your schach goes all the way up there, and you have an empty space among in your schach. There is a measurement of how much empty space you're allowed to have, uh, three tefachim by three tefachim, which is a uh, uh, a little less, uh, it's around nine inches by nine inches of empty space. So in other words, you could get away with uh, with uh, um, uh, if the sukkah is is uh, uh, has an area of of, of nine uh, of empty space that's nine that's up to nine inches. Okay, um, the next gemara is. Or it could be that even if it's nine inches, it doesn't have to be nine by nine. It's nine inches. I'm just thinking up to nine inches, even if it would go all the way across. I'm not sure. I have to look it up how that, how, how, how much it could be that it could even go all the way across. If it's less than nine inches, then, uh, then it could be it's not a problem. The problem is when it's, when it's more than nine inches, or if your schach doesn't reach the roof and you have empty space, you know, that's when it's that's when it's really a problem. Okay. Um, so the next case of the Gemara is Haisa Pusam You have a stuka that's too too short, less than 10 tfachim. So what do you want to do? Dig a hole in the ground. So you dug a hole in the ground to now make your sukkah 10 tfachim tall. The problem is you didn't make your hole flush with the walls of your sukkah. You made a hole, uh, you, a little uh, a smaller inside. hole inside it. Inside your sukkah, you made another hole. So now you've got a wall up to the top of the hole. And then you have a, a, few, a little away from that, you have the walls of your upper area walls. You have lower area wall, which is the wall of the hole, the ditch. And then you have an upper area wall, which is you, the wall of what you initially planned on using as your sukkah, but it's too le it's less than 10 tfachim. So altogether, you've reached 10 tfachim now. You add both holes together, both uh, walls together. So the chakak basa, you dug in it today, to complete it to 10 tfachim. Now the Gemara says, can you attach these two walls to make these two walls into your... So, so if you can, um, if there is space from the edge of the uh, digging, and to the wall, gimel tfachim, three tfachim, that is the law of lovid. If you have more than that, it's, you lose out from the lovid law, from the attached uh, attachment, of being able to attach things, because it's three tfachim is too much. So it's psula, it's invalid, because your, your lower uh, hole is not connected to your uh, sukkah that's outside, that's above the ground. Your below ground uh, walls do not attach to the above ground walls. Why? Because they are three tvachim away. You can't attach them and say, oh, they're so close, it's considered like one big wall. Why? Because what's the measurement? Three tvachim. That's the max. That's too much already. So it's psul, it's invalid. Now we turn the page. Pachos mishleish tvachim, if you have less than three tvachim, so then you have the law of lovid. Now you attach a law. Lovid means is this concept of being like a branch. We, we attach them and it branches out. So it's pachas mishlois tefachim less than three tefachim. It's kshera. It is kosher because we attach the above the the the, the ground to below the ground and say, oh, all together you've got a ten tefachim sukkah. Your sukkah is now thirty five inches, thirty two inches. It's a kosher sukkah, and you are uh, uh, you are. Uh, able to consider both walls as if it's one big wall. It's uh, it's considered it's all it's all one it's it's all uh, um, it, it's a kosher sukkah. My so the Gemara asks why now do we use this law of 
of three tfachim. And earlier we spoke about the law of four cubits. It's a big difference, a huge, huge difference. Four cubits is uh, 24 hand breaths. And here we're talking about three tfachim, three hand breaths. It's a huge difference. So when it came to the uh, the, 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 the issue with the schach, that it's too tall, we allowed you to do this daifan akuma law. And uh, the daifan akuma law let you have up to Four amais, four cubits, twenty-four uh, hand breaths. And here, when it comes to digging a, in the hole in the ground, you got to make sure it's close to the edge of the three tvachim, three hand breaths. It's a very big difference. Where I ask, Maishna Hasam Damit Pachus Me Arba Amais. Why over there is it different that we say as long as it's less than four cubits, it's kosher? Maishna Hasam, why over here is it different? The Amrit that you said Pachus Me Shleish Tvachim has to be less than three hand breaths. So my answer is Hasam de Isla Daifin. Over there, you got a wall. Your wall is there. Um, even though it's big and it's 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 above the laws of sukkah, it's, it's too big. But at least it's a wall. So there you have a wall, Pachas Mear Ba'amas Sagyu. It's enough, as long as it's less than four amas, it's enough to be able to attach it and use the law of Daifin Akuba. However, hacha here, when you have this small, tiny sukkah, too short, to make something into a wall, a wall is only a wall if it has 10 tfachim, 10 hand, bre- 10 hand breaths, which is somewhere between 30 and 40 inches. So only if it has, if it has such a... Uh, size, then it's a wall. If it's less than that, you, we want to make it into a wall. Here, we're trying to make something into a wall. Here, if it's less than three tzvachim, that's okay. We can make it into a wall, but um, if it doesn't have less than three tzvachim, if it's three tzvachim or more, then it's loy. you cannot use this and make you use any halacha to make it into a wall. So what it seems like the Gemara is saying is that the, the halacha l'mayshim misinais are based somewhat on some logic that if you need to make something into a wall, then the halacha l'mayshim misinai uh, says you got to It's got to work within three tefachim. But in order to once once it is a wall, then there there could be an addition or there could be a halacha l'mayshim misinai to uh, to to work with it, and uh, that that would be uh, even if it's within only four four cubits. Um, it, it, as big as four, even if it's as big as up to four cubits, that's that's okay, and you could um, you could use that as a way of koshering, making kosher your walls of your sukkah, even though they're too big. Okay, so that's basically <laughs> these laws over here with how it's too big. What do you do if it's too small? What do you do? And uh, uh, so we got a few heterim now, a few uh, avenues of making a sukkah kosher. Yes, right, Jeffrey. So, uh, but isn't there a difference when it's underneath the wall as opposed to be above the wall, right? So, so you would think that you would have the like, walls grounded, especially on the bottom. Uh, so, for example, if you had your example, if you got lattice work for the walls, right? what it's saying is that that if the lattice doesn't go down to the ground, it could be slightly above. Right. The same, that's the same rule as if you're digging underneath the walls. That's correct. That's correct. So, for example, uh, on these prefab sukkahs, uh, and they don't want to use the wall, the fabric wall for their s- walls. They want to use the belt that they provide for their walls. They don't put a belt all the way on the floor because they don't need that. As long as there's it's within nine inches from the first belt to the floor, that's already the first section of your wall, right? So right. yeah, so you, you don't need it to be uh, a flush with the ground. Your wall could be a little above the ground and it's considered that it goes all the way down to the ground because of the law of love it. Right, so the, the upper part and the bottom part have two different sets of rules. The upper part, you really ideally have the wall going right up to the schach, very close to the schach. That was you, what you're talking about the beginning. imaginary. Are you talking about an imaginary wall all the way up to the schach or a real wall up to the schach? A, a, a real wall, ideally. Okay. It's okay, a real yeah. wall has to be up close to the, to the schach. schach. 
and okay. it also has to be within this short distance from the ground. Right. Right. Well, so if you have a wall that goes all the way up to the schach, and uh, it, 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 but it, but it, it goes all the way up to the top, then you would be able to get away with having your schach not exactly touching it because you could rely on the law of Lovett on the top yeah. and the law of Lovett on the bottom. So it doesn't have to touch the ground as long as then eight, you know, nine, less than nine inches away from the ground and less than nine inches away from the schach on the top, that would be okay. But if you don't have the wall, that's where we were talking. It could, could be problematic because you're relying on two things. Number one, an imaginary wall and then attaching an imaginary wall to schach where you got, you know, right. you're, 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 Correct. you're Correct. It's yeah. best to plan it that you're going to have a regular wall if at all oh. possible. Yeah, regular wall is great. Shock. Except except for the fact that in Florida, it's not yeah. always so practical to have a regular wall, unless you have an air conditioner. If you're putting an air conditioner in your sukkah, then then you could have a regular wall all the way up to the schach. And, uh, yeah. The Gemara knows about that, too. The Gemara says it's the hottest time of year, right? <laughs> so, so, Oh, it's, my time is up. Very good. Anyway, have a wonderful, uh, a good day, a good Shabbos. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you on Sunday. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Good Shabbos, everybody.